And fortunately, and maybe unfortunately for you, many of you mentors may serve as that one person in that child's life um, that present as a healthy, secure relationship. And so we don't want to minimize the importance of how we not only uh, show up in that relationship with children, but also how we um, end or close that relationship with children because we know that, hey, we can't be in their lives forever. And so we want that to be done in a healthy but impactful way. And so um, I want to just kind of share with you something on the, on the topic of attachment styles. Um, okay. Oop. All right. Um, so a psychologist by the name of John Bowlby studied uh, the, the relationships between children who had healthy or uh, unhealthy parent-child or parent or caregiver-child relationships. And so they explored the different dynamics of the relationships and the emotional, the mental emotional wellness of a child based on how they attach to their parent or caregiver. And so there were four different attachment styles, secure, anxious, or ambivalent, uh, disorganized, and avoidant. And so a secure attachment style is a child who, um, a child who has a healthy attachment with their parent or caregiver. Their parent or caregiver uh, is emotionally present, physically present, and they allow them to practice autonomy. And so that child usually attaches very securely to different for people in their lives. They're generally happy and trusting individuals, okay? Now, when there is a child who does not have a healthy uh, um, attachment to a parent or caregiver, they will develop more of the anxious type attachment styles. And so if the child has a parent who is either drug addicted, um, incarcerated, um, emotionally or physically not available. So some of our, what we call latchkey children, parents may be the healthiest they could be, but they're in and out of the home because of work. Maybe they're working several jobs or they're striving towards education. And so that child is left uh, unoccupied a lot. The child will develop more the anxious type attachment styles. And so the anxious and bevelin attachment styles where the child has high levels of anxiety and insecurity uh, with this attachment style, they may seem very clingy, um, more frequently may need attention by their parent or caregiver, but at times will reject that attention when offered to them because of insecurities. Um, they may also be very cautious or skeptical of strangers or new relationships. Um, and so as I'm describing this, you may have in your mind, this could be your mentee or a child that you've worked with in the past. And so that is the more anxious or ambivalent attachment style. That child has a lot of insecurities around relationships because they may not experience that bond between their parent or their caregiver as they should have during their development. Another more um, anxious attachment style is the disorganized attachment style. Now with disorganized attached children, they struggle with managing their emotions. They may display anger, erratic behavior, or be just likely, or be more likely to seem depressed, withdrawn, or unresponsive. So they're more of the flat affect child, just kind of, you know, hi, good, not too much to say, um, could be kind of timid and reserved. And that's normally because, again, they did not form that healthy bond or that stable, secure bond with their parent or caregiver. Now, the avoidant attached child, um, these type of children often are emotionally distant. They don't let people get too close to them. They have been taught or they have perceived that closeness uh, is scary, um, is not lasting. Um, can be traumatic for them. And so they often put up emotional blocks or emotional walls, what I call emotional walls. They may interact with people and objects, but they prefer objects. Um, they may be very weary of physical contact like hugs and cuddles. They don't necessarily like the closeness. Um, a child with the avoid attachment style also often displays early signs of independence. They rather do things themselves rather than ask for help or seek any type of guidance from their parents. So these may be some of the children that may be struggling 
academically struggling in the classroom but won't ask for help. I'll do it myself. I got it. I'll do it myself or I'll just figure it out or it's safer for them to, if they can figure it out, to struggle on their own, even to, um, to the detriment really, um, than to ask for help or for somebody to know they need help, okay? So those are the four different attachment styles that are normally created based on a child's attachment to their parent or caregiver. Now, you may be saying, what does this have to do with us as mentors? Well, it has a lot to do with um, mentors because again, you serve as a relationship in that child's life. And so when children have unhealthy senses of attachment, this impacts their lives in all relationships, work, career, personal, peer, intimate partner, um, whatever relationships they are expected to show up in, physically, mentally, emotionally, they will notice, you will see some of these traits um, come out. Now, I'm not here to diagnose or treat any of you, but one, all of us fall into one of these based on our unique um, childhood and our unique life experiences. And so based on what you know about yourself and how you show up in relationships, as you see, as the child gets older, they take that childlike mindset, that childlike life experience, and they bring it into their adulthood, okay? And so as mentors, although you may serve one purpose in that child's life, and that may be to help them academically or with literacy, literacy or just to be a mentor model, the way that child views you could either be something from a positive standpoint or a negative standpoint in how you show up in that relationship could either foster their negative belief systems about relationships or encourage more healthier mindsets towards relationships. And so we wanna talk about what are just a few healthy examples of closure. And so as you are, I don't know the capacity that each, of, each one of you are working with with your mentee, um, but as you come close to ending that relationship, it is very important that you acknowledge the importance of identifying and connecting with what that child may be experiencing, okay? And so we wanna acknowledge and connect with the emotions that the child may be feeling towards termination. Never minimize it. Oh, I was only here for so many weeks or so many. Oh, you've only known me this. Oh, we didn't get a chance to get close. You don't wanna minimize um, your impact in that child's life, okay? Sometimes it helps to say things like, I can see this may be hard for you. Um, or I can see this could be difficult. So you want to acknowledge the difficulty that that child may be experiencing. Even ask them, what is it you're thinking you're feeling right now? You know, connect with their heart because you may be the only one or you could assume that they're taking it just fine and they may not be, or it could be the, in reverse. Connect with your own personal experience of loss of an important relationship in your life, in your past, in order to relate and practice empathy. Sometimes we have to be able to, we have to come from out of our adult selves and kind of connect with that child in us because we've all at one point experienced some level of loss, whether it was predicted, whether it was um, expected or welcomed, um, we've all experienced some sort of loss. And so what would you as a child want an adult in your life to say? What would you as a child want an adult in your life to connect with? And so we want to connect with the emotions that that child may be experiencing. Help the child recognize their personal strength and how they've grown since you've been working with them. The best thing we could do is build, um, is to build a sense of empowerment, a uh, sense of efficacy within that child. And so they need to know that when I'm gone, you'll be just fine. Wow, look how much you've grown since we worked together. You've been able to read three books. You know, you've come out of your shell. You've shared more with me. Acknowledge that child's personal strength. Let them know that they're great, not just because of you, but because they're great, okay? And so we wanna foster that internal greatness. We wanna um, increase that efficacy 
That's self-efficacy. Some people may write a letter to their mentee, acknowledging their strengths. Acknowledge their strengths, your favorite memory of your time together, what you see in him or her today, what your hopes are for them in the future, what you admire the most about mentoring them. Okay, so we just wanna kind of connect with their strengths. Um, create age appropriate ways to bring closure. What are some ideas you may have that may be appropriate to bring closure in that child's life? So whether we do an artwork together, we write a poem. Um, I don't know if you guys are able to walk around the school, but I don't know, just something creative. And avoid making empty promises. Again, we don't know exactly that child's background or what their walk of life is. And so last thing we wanna do is be that fifth, hundredth, or that first person who promised me something that they can't fulfill. And so we don't wanna make any empty promises. Oh, I promise I'll come back and see you. Something could happen to you and you may not be on this earth again. Um, or I promise we'll always stay in contact. Don't make empty promises. Maybe don't make any promises at all, okay? And so again, very briefly in summary, I'm gonna stop sharing. We know we cannot shield these children from endings, losses, whatever. It could be a healthy part of life if it's done with empathy and regard, if it's done intentionally, if it's done and it's well thought out. The last thing we want to do is become another person who has left my life abruptly or left my life inconsiderately. And so my challenge and my charge to you is how can you not only show up with your resources, your time and talent into the lives of these children, but also show up as a healthy, secure relationship that knows how to come in and end just as well. Any questions? Comments or concerns? Will we receive a copy of your PowerPoint? Are you able to share that with us? Oh, sure. Or, your, yeah, or notes, sure. it was just really lovely and very valuable. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you will. Thank you. I will send yes. that out to everyone. Thank you. I think we have a couple of questions in the chat. I see Cookie has a question. Yeah. Um, my, my mentee is feeling overwhelmed that she's not going to be meeting with me every week, that school's going to be over. She was really um, disappointed about that. I think I'm a constant I think she knows she can see me every Friday. <clears throat> she has a lot of people in her house, a lot of half brothers and sisters. And I think her mom works a lot. How can, I, with these students, can you make any suggestions? Yeah, um, I, I guess you really wanna consider what the guidelines and the regulations are as far as how you can keep in contact. I think. That's really important. And if you are allowed to have access in some way to the children, whether it's through email, I don't, I don't know. Um, I thought maybe I could drop her a card maybe every week or every. So we don't actually. Um, two weeks, but I'm not, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, so Cookie, um, on that, we, you know, we don't interact with the students during the summer. So one of the things is, you know, definitely have that letter maybe that um, you can send to the liaison. So that last week of school, the liaison can give that to the student. And then when we return in the fall, your liaison will reach out to you to schedule your fall mentor sessions, whether okay. they're going to be face to face or continue to be, um, you know, if you want to stay virtual, you're more than welcome to stay virtual. Um, our hope is that we will be able to return face to face mentoring in the fall. And as soon as we find out, we will let everyone know. Uh, we will let the liaisons know and the liaison will also let you know as um, the mentors at whatever school you're at. So um, our final week for mentor sessions is the last week in May. 
And that's where you want to start kind of thinking about that conversation, whether you're going to return in the fall and have that conversation saying, I look forward to meeting with you in the fall. Um, would you like me to do that? And then the liaison is going to be reaching out to you in sometime in May to ask you if you want to continue mentoring that student, if you would like to move on to the next grade with that student. If you have a student who's in fifth grade and they're going into middle school, um, if you would like to follow that student to whatever middle school that they will be attending. So that will be a conversation that you will have with your liaison. But for communication <coughs> during the summer, um, we do not do that. Our liaisons aren't at the school during the summer. So it's really not possible to do that. And sometimes maybe students move so, you know, that's, you know, that's where you can start developing and thinking about what you're going to those conversations, those last couple of weeks that you will have with your mentee. Um, someone yeah, is asking, like an exciting, oh, I'm sorry, I was gonna say maybe give them like an exciting over the summer uh, project like, hey, I really want to know, I can't wait to hear about how your summer was, maybe they'll journal, encourage them to, hey, journal your summer for the um, for the next few months. And I can't wait to read and hear about all the fun activities. So kind of, okay. I love journaling. So kind of get them to start writing and doing things like that. Yeah. Or you could do it the other way around where you give them a book and every week, every month of the summer, or week of the summer, you write a note to them and say, you can read this each week from me. Oh, Great that's idea. good. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Love it. So I had some, another question and we've got stuff going on in our chats, really awesome. What about um, to high school? So if your student is in middle school, you most definitely can move with your student if they would like for you to continue to be their mentor. Um, you can move with them to the high school as well. And what will happen is um, the liaison will communicate to the high school liaison um, that you will be, um, you would like to move with that student. So we are going to go into breakout rooms and I think we're gonna go in there for about 10 minutes. I wanna be able to have time to come back to maybe answer a few more questions. Um, but in your breakout room, um, it's an opportunity for you to kind of further discuss these ideas. Um, you will have um, one of our coordinators, um, Michelle is gonna be graciously said she would join and facilitate one of our breakout rooms. But talk about maybe some goals that you've set with your students or setting new goals um, that you can have with your student. Talk about maybe moving on to the next grade or how you will close your mentoring year. If you're not going to return, having that conversation with your student or if you plan on returning, asking that student again if they would like for you to continue mentoring them. Um, and again, like I mentioned, the liaisons will be reaching out to each one of you to find out if you plan on returning in the fall. So you don't have to give a decision now, but start thinking about that. What's that gonna look like? And then um, what do you hope to discuss in your final mentor sessions with your students? So I've got breakout rooms. Um, we'll do them for 10 minutes and then we're gonna bring everybody back um, to kind of um, break down what, what was discussed in the breakout rooms. And then maybe some final questions for Ms. Zanita. All right, so I'm gonna put everyone in the breakout room. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. Welcome back. We, everyone's going to be joining us <clears throat> in just a moment. We had six breakout rooms and about 70 people all together in the breakout room. So give it just a moment here for everyone to return. And hopefully, um, I, had a, I had a question in our breakout room and it was, um, and maybe I saw Kim Landry is on here. <clears throat> Someone was asking about take stock the end dates and if um, with the take stock chat app, if they would be able to continue to communicate over the summer 
I don't know, Kim, if you're available, if you heard that. So um, the, I know the chat app will be down for the month of July. They pull it down. Um, they're doing some more updates to it. So July seems to be that time to, that, that's a good time to do it. Um, but we are trying to not lose contact with our students over the summer um, at, from a programmatic standpoint. So we will continue to offer our group mentoring sessions, our take stocks, our take stock talks four times um, a week for students to stay engaged with us. And we're gonna hopefully get that going um, July 1. And we'll be taking a break from Take Stock Talks in June. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you, Kim. So Deb, I'm- it's Mich Deb, it's Michelle. Yes, Michelle. Can I just say one thing? Absolutely. I, I just wanna say one thing. So we had a really great group and, um, but we had some people uh, make a statement that I really, really want to address. So, you know, I know that a lot of our students, especially our Take Stark students, they have, um, you know, they do really well academically. Uh, they seem to have a good family life. Um, and sometimes I think as mentors, we may question like, what am I doing here? You know, I'm really not sure that I'm adding any value to their life, uh, but they do need a mentor because of that scholarship. You know, you never know the effect that you're having on a student because they may, they're not going to like come out and say, oh, you're so wonderful. Thank you so much for mentoring me. You know, that doesn't always happen. Um, you know, even our own kids might not think they were wonderful parents to they're like in their fifties, but anyways, you, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I had a student that I mentored for four years. She was awesome. She went off to college. I didn't think I would ever hear from her again. And she had contacted the foundation and asked to have my contact information. And we spoke um, a month or two ago. Um, she actually called me up because I said it was okay. And she said to me that, you know, I'm so glad that you were my mentor. Thank you so much. And, and it was just really wonderful to have that conversation with her because I really thought I didn't do anything. Um, so don't, don't think that you don't have an impact because you may have an impact that may not come to materialize till years later to that person. So just, I just wanted to let um, mentors know that you are impacting those students that you spend that 30 minutes with every single week. Thanks, Deb. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> yeah. So um, maybe the facilitators from the other breakout rooms, if you had any questions that you weren't, that came up that you thought bring back to the main group. Um, Sheila, did you have anyone? Any question or anything that you wanted to present to this at this moment? So someone is asking, what is Take Stock? I'll get that real quick. That is our scholarship program through the Pinellas County Education Foundation. And students who are in middle school can be nominated for this scholarship program. They have to be on free and reduced lunch. Have um, Kim, tell me, is it a 2.0 grade average? Can I, um, so yes. we're not looking at, we, we don't look at free and reduced lunch anymore because oh. everyone is getting free and reduced lunch because of the pandemic. So okay. that is not a, a, a good qualifier for the state. So we do look at family income, um, what they have on their tax returns. And if the family doesn't file taxes, we also look at um, SNAP and um, uh, temporary assistance for needy families. So um, those are our qualifiers for Take Stock and Children. We bring in students between sixth and ninth grade into the program. Um, we just brought in 232 students into the program. Um, we have about nine more that we're still chasing after for them to sign their contracts. Um, but yeah, so um, I just wanted to add that part. But awesome, ahead, thank you. <laughs> no, that's perfect. And that means we need more mentors for those students. So um, definitely, if you're interested in becoming a Take Stock mentor, please email me. Um, I, I will put my email in the chat um, for you to reach out to me and we can get you connected to a Take Stock student. Sheila. Yeah, we didn't have any specific questions necessarily, but we had a good chat about this, this session and, and how useful it was to be thinking now about closure, um, not, not like 
not necessarily the end. Although, for instance, in my case, um, my student is graduating. So it, it is basically the end of our mentor-mentee relationship anyway. Um, so, you know, for me to start thinking about that now and, and do some planning, but even just others for the summer. And, and in, in the past, people spoke, you know, about how awkward summers were and, you know, you just, you had one session and then all of a sudden you were gone and it was, you know, months or weeks and um, you were just hoping that liaison would call you so you could get your session started again. And to address that with the student, you know, ahead of time and the value of that and just thinking about projects over the summer and little things we can do. I love all the ideas. We talked about it in the, the group as well about notes and you know, or envelopes, you know, every week, uh, a notebook to turn the page, some art projects, anything, anything for that mentee to, to begin to, you know, remember and, and be focused, maybe have a, a goal and to um, think about, you know, getting back with their mentor, the value of anticipation. So it's, it's hard. It's the way the program is. We, we don't allow contact over the summer. And sometimes a pause like that you know, can be a good thing. And you remember what you miss and, and why you're gonna look forward to, to that relationship, you know, um, starting up again in the fall, so. Awesome, thank you. Ms. Wishman, I wanna just interject something right yes, after. Ma'am. Because Kimberly is going to highlight our group, but I wanted to um, state this uh, for all of our liaisons that might have experienced this. Vivian and our group indicated that she's experienced a closure um, because she was notified by her liaison that her student is no longer in school, that they're gone online and there was no way to find out if she had ever come back or he will come back. So I wanted the liaisons to know if that has happened because oftentimes due to whatever situation, our students might be placed on what we call online learning for the remaining of the year, and you did not have that opportunity for closure. If you let us know that, we could kind of intercede for you for that piece to contact that student via a phone call to say, your mentor is very interested in continuing your mentorship next year. Um, and making sure that you are both reconnected or if there's an articulation to a different level uh, from, from elementary to middle and you're interested in moving on with the student that we also communicate that to the student, the family, and then also to the upcoming liaison at the new school. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Dr. Brown. So Kim, you had your group, you wanna share what you guys discussed? Sure, sure. So we really thought that the idea of having the student journal their summer um, would be effective in not only helping the student remember what they did over the summer, but creating that dialogue once the student and the mentor get back together. Um, so that can work for the closure piece as well as breaking the ice once we start up the new school year. Um, one of our uh, members said that they are not going to seek closure because they are determined that they will meet again with their student. Um, so that's, I guess, another approach. Um, however, I think it makes sense to just at least have some sort of goodbye, have a great summer. Um, I look forward to seeing you again, conversation with the student. I don't know that it has to be so, so heavy. I know when students are graduating high school and making that jump into college, that is a, a heavier relationship. But the beautiful thing about that is that, um, you know, once students go to college, then the student and the mentor can have a completely different relationship where they're sharing communication. You know, I'm, I'm friends with some of the students that I've mentored over the years in social media and I get to see their lives and see the, the, the good things that are happening with them. And that, that always makes me feel good. Um, Dr. Brim suggest, suggested that when we're having our closure with students to just add some safety measures, you know, because we are still in this, in this space of COVID and we want our students to remain safe. So, you know, make sure you know, when we're talking with our kids to just tell them, 
hey, let's make sure we wear our mask and stay socially distant and you know, make sure you're washing your hands and, and so on. So that was, a, that was about what we got out of our group. Um, anyone in our group, if there's anything I missed, please feel to jump in and add it in. I kind of want to jump in. I, I had the privilege of being a part of their breakout session. And um, when Dr. Brim mentioned safety measures, something clicked in me and I thought, why didn't I mention that? Um, but uh, she was coming more from the COVID pandemic safety measures. And I'm thinking more of the safety measures as far as literally, you know, keeping them safe. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know, but during the summertime is when uh, youth or adolescent crime rates go up drug use, they get into things that they normally would not get into because they have a lot of time on their hands. And so, you know, what safety measures or safety advice do you feel confident and comfortable with giving them? Uh, how to handle pressures during the summer? Um, how to avoid, you know, uh, unhealthy peer groups during the summer? Like what tips could you give them because you all come with such wisdom. And although you may come from different walks of life from your mentee, there's still some nuggets that you can give to them. And so, yeah, maybe write out a safety card um, of some advice and tips to give them to kind of keep them out of trouble during the summer or to not lose everything they've learned. Read a book 15 minutes a day, write a letter, do, you know, write a short story, just some kind of tips. Um, and for those who are going from high school and transitioning into college, I also work on a college campus in their counseling center. And my freshmen struggle from transitioning from that high school life to being an independent adult. And so what advice could you give them about transitioning into adulthood that they may not need it now, but it could be, as I say, a tool in their toolbox that I promise they'll need it later. And so what tools can you give them for their toolbox? Thank you, Zanita, I appreciate that. So we're coming to a close. Um, I'd like to give you one, uh, like a minute or two to kind of cl close this, bring it all together for us, if you don't mind, if you have any last, um, appreciate that, what you just mentioned, but anything else that we can take away uh, before we end this afternoon? Oh, I should have said Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, go ahead, Somebody. Brittany. Um, so my group was a great group. Um, we talked about um, some challenges with the pandemic and not being one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Vicki brought up a great idea of writing a thank you note to your mentee instead of it all being the other way around or just the other way around and letting them know how much you appreciate them and what they're doing for you as well, which I thought was really awesome. Um, and then I did have a, a concern about a, a liaison at Bay Point. I think they're in transition or there isn't one. So um, one of my mentors was just um, describing not really being able to have closure um, and what we can do with, about that, which I believe Dr. Brim actually discussed. So I'll follow up with her. Um, and then I have one um, mentor that would like to continue with one of the uh, siblings of the student she's mentoring now that she's been mentoring since fifth grade and is now graduating. So I thought that would be a really great idea, um, but we weren't sure how to do that or if you can continue as siblings. Yes, you can. So that would reach out to the liaison at that school and you know just have that discussion on you know being able to mentor with that student, depending on what school they're at and stuff. So thank you. Well. Thank you everyone for joining Zaneda. Any closing? Thank you so much for joining us and for speaking on this topic. What valuable information, you know, for our for us as mentors and for our students. Yeah, absolutely. Just say keep throwing those seeds. You may not see the fruits of your labor now. You may have that minty that says one or two things but it does not mean that it's not impactful. And so we are seed throwers and we sow seeds and when it's time for it to grow, the harvest will show. And so thank you for everything you, you're doing with our young people. Thank you. And um, as I mentioned, our next coffee hour is May 31st. So I hope you will join us. It will be our last coffee hour before we go on break for the summer. 
Um, maybe we'll discuss if we should keep doing these virtual coffee hours. I love being able to connect with you guys and, and hear your stories and be have that opportunity to share with each other. Um, so we'll kind of discuss maybe what it will look like in the fall. Again, we will continue offering virtual mentoring. Um, and the liaison at some point, we will let you guys know um, in our newsletter, emailings, um, what the what school will look like in the fall, whether we're returning face to face and what that looks like. But thank you so much for being mentors. Thank you for volunteering your time and spending that time with your student. It means so much to them, uh, to you know the, the school and the impact that you have on them. So thank you. I'm gonna put in the chat real quick um, if you guys want to um, fill out the survey that we have. Um, what you thought about the workshop. And if you have any questions or anything, please click on the link. But thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate all that you guys do for our students, for the schools, and have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Zaneda. I have a, a quick question if I could. Sure. I'll stay uh, on for a moment. Okay. I'll wait.